The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those living in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For the yoke of our burden, the bar across our shoulders and the rod of our oppressor you have broken. Would you join me and let's stand and sing all the verses of hymn number 182.
We light the pink candle of joy because Jesus brings true joy. We light the candle of love because Jesus shows us the fullness of God's love. Tonight, we light the candle of the Christ candle, but tonight Jesus is born. The Messiah has come. Jesus is our salvation. Join me in that. The Messiah has come. Jesus Christ is our salvation. Empty that I am 
If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would know my heart. What man can I?
John the Baptist prepares the way a reading from Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 and 11. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Judea and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is who was spoken or through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after the, me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and the fire. Let's stand and sing hymn number 156, verses 1 and 2. I'm Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Pride.
the angel visits Joseph in a dream. A reading from Matthew 1, 18-25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the Lord, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Set the night. 
born in Bethlehem. A reading from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David. Because he belonged to the house and line of David, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, this came the time, this came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Let's stand and sing hymn number 180, verses 1 and 2, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
stand and sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, all verses, number 185. Mary, 
and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure, treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route.
Please join me in the responsive gospel reading from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Some years ago, I was a, a pastor working for a church up in Oakland, New Jersey. And every single fall, I took a group of church kids up to the Adirondacks for a long weekend youth retreat. Immediately after the kids got out of school on a Friday, we pile into what was a caravan of cars volunteer drivers that I recruited to make that long trip five hours all the way up into the mountains, which meant that we always then arrived at our destination after dark. And you don't really know what darkness is until you drive away from the suburbs and its street lights, its neon signs, the traffic lights, the stores, the houses. Up there in the mountains, there is none of those things. And darkness is truly dark. But each and every single year without fail, when we did finally arrive at our cabin deep in the woods, there in the Adirondacks, after many, many hours in the car, listening to the loud and excited conversations of middle school and high school age kids, all the kids would pile out of the cars and immediately grow silent. Suddenly there was nothing more they had to say. There were once boisterous conversations ceased as they found themselves now awestruck. There before their eyes lay an amazing spectacle, glorious splendor of God Almighty laid out for them in the night sky, a blanket of stars unlike anything they had ever seen before, and their mouths would suddenly lay open and their voices would suddenly grow quiet as each and every one of us didn't matter what age you were from the youngest to the oldest of us suddenly found ourselves unable to do anything else than to look up at the heavens with absolute wonder. You see, where we live, especially here in this area, we have simply too much competing light in our everyday lives, our everyday experience, for us to see this wondrous sight. And yet, it's still right there all the while. Today, our problem is no longer a fear of the darkness. We have overcome darkness with the invention of artificial light. And today, such artificial lights are everywhere we look. And while the invention of artificial light may, may very well serve to keep us safe from harm, it also serves to distract us. Some of the lights we have invented help us to see our way at night, things like street lights and headlights and even the night light in your own little bedroom if you have one. But other lights are deliberately designed to catch our attention and evoke a response within us. Just think about those brightly lit billboards that we can see from incredible distances out on the horizon from the New Jersey Turnpike while we ourselves live here in Richfield. 
or the bright lights of sporting venues like Giant Stadium visible on game night from my own bedroom window. Or perhaps you think of the neon signs that call out to us from the malls, things like Garden State Plaza as it calls out to us as we drive by on Route 4 or Route 17. Or maybe even we can think of the lights on Times Square that we will see once again broadcast to the world on New Year's Eve. All of these kinds of lights call out to us, look at me, look at me. But all of this light keeps us from being able to see God's light, the true light that shines in the darkness. As human beings have evolved and technology has made it possible now for us to actually believe that we are gods unto ourselves, more and more we block out the light of God that shines in our lives. And it becomes easier and easier to forget that God's light is still right there, right here among us this night. It's right here within our sight if we would only block out all of the artificial light competing for our attention and remember simply to look up to see him. God sent the Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be the light of humankind. And this is as true today as it was 2,000 some odd years ago. Christ is still the light of God to whom we turn our eyes in order to find our way through the darkness. And for many, this Christmas season, it is, oh, so dark out there. With COVID continuing and the continual loss of loved ones with the struggles of inflation and threatening to keep us from making ends meet, for young people in need of friendships and face-to-face -face relationships, for nurses and doctors and healthcare workers who have grown tired and are ready to call it quits, for teachers and for students who are having trouble seeing to their educational needs and their education suffers, to the sudden loss of hope that many of us had for this evening and a return to normalcy where we could worship together without having to wear masks, now delayed by the latest variant of COVID-19. This Christmas season is a prolonged season of darkness for many. And yet it's a darkness through which we find our way by keeping our eyes firmly fixed on the light of the world who is still right here with us. You see, all of our artificial light is exactly that. And our souls will never be satisfied with artificial light. Our souls will never be satisfied until we find the source of our being. We need the light of Christ in our lives as much as we ever have. Because human beings continue to crave the awe and the wonder of God, the spectacle of truth and the one true light of God. And until our eyes come to rest upon the one who is the light of the world, we will continue to simply stumble about in our darkness. So I invite you, this Christmas Eve, lift up your eyes, my friends, above all of the artificial light of this world, and surely you will see him there in the midst of our darkest days and nights, because Jesus is 
still and continues to be the light that shines in the darkness. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, who breaks through our darkness like the light of the brightest star our eyes have ever seen, you came into the world to illumine our path and to give our lives deeper meaning and hope, even in the most uncertain of days. In the year ahead, Lord, keep our eyes firmly fixed upon you and the message of good news that you came into the world to proclaim, that we are not lost forever to God, but our beloved of God, who saves us and frees us from all fear and all darkness. Shine brightly within us, Lord Jesus, that we would become beacons of your light to the world, helping others to lift their eyes and see the glorious splendor of your unfailing love. In your blessed and holy name we pray. Amen. It is time for the lighting of our candles and the singing of Silent Night. If you don't already know it by heart, Silent Night is number 186, and we will sing all verses.
bars in the night. Please join me in the responsive benediction printed in your bulletins. And with the singing of joy to the world, you can extinguish your candles. May the light of the world be with you this night. <laughs>